Welcome to Ham Radio, dude. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm W9FFF Ham Radio, dude. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Yezu FT70D and why this may be a good radio for your first radio or even for your first upgrade. To get started, I want to talk about why did I purchase this radio as opposed to any other radio. Well, I have a lot of lower end radios for reviews on this channel, and I decided, hey, if I was a new amateur radio operator, I would probably want to see a video about what is your next step radio. And I believe that the Yaesu FT70D is probably your next step radio, so I purchased it. This radio was purchased from Ham Radio Outlet, and the reason I did so was is it was in stock. It was on sale for $174, and I generally know that Ham Radio Outlet will ship things to me, and I'll have them the next day. There are many features of this radio that would make you want to upgrade from a lower-end radio to, we'll call this the next step up, but I think the main attraction to this radio will be the capability of C4FM. And the radio is so much more than just being able to use digital mode and then VHF, UHF, or transmit. But as you can see above me, there's quite a few different transmit ranges available. But the big one that everybody seems to enjoy is the airband, which this radio is capable of receiving on the airband. One thing I did notice about this radio is it does not have the capability for commercial FM radio, such as your local radio station that you like to listen to which I always find to be kind of a nice little feature. But uh, it does have the capability in the U.S. model, at least, for a weather alert scan. The Yaesu FT70 is IP54 rated, and what that means is two things. The five means that it's going to be dust protective. No dust should get into this radio, except for the dust that does get into the radio won't affect the overall operation of the radio. And then the four in IP54 means that this thing is splash-proof from all directions. Doesn't mean you can submerge it into water. Doesn't mean you could hit it with a garden hose, but it does mean that if you get some splashes on it, like maybe a little bit of rain, it's not going to affect the radio. You might be asking yourself, how does this thing compare as far as size goes to other radios? Well, this radio is very wide. It's kind of bulky, but it actually isn't in a comfortable way. Um, so my hands still fit around it and there's no problems there, but it does have a lot more width than other radios. As far as comparing it to a UV5R, you could again definitely see the width difference. They're about the same size and height, and they're about the same size uh, from the front of the radio to the back of the radio. Uh, and you know what? Now that I think about it, too, holding it in my hand, this Baofeng, for example, or even, you know, this FT65, for example, it's a really skinny feel after you get used to having a little bit wider of a Yezu FT70 in your hand. So I kind of do like that. Uh, but size wise, yeah, it is wider, but uh, the other dimensions are approximately the same. They're not identical, but they're approximately the same. And if you've ever held a FT3D or an FT2D, uh, I would actually argue that size-wise, they're about the same. The FT3D might be a skosh taller, but uh, that's about it. If you have seen my video on the FT4 or the FT65, you'll know my big complaint is the push-to-talk button and how it comes out at a very dramatic angle and then rapidly ingresses back into the radio. It is very also hard to pull down or push down and hold down this uh, push to talk button on the FT65. But it appears with the FT70 that that's not the case. First off, the angle of the button doesn't come out nearly as bad, and the ingression isn't uh, nearly as steep or as deep. And holding down the button is really easy. It's nothing like the FT4 or the FT65. People ask, well, what kind of power output do I get on this radio? And up to 5 watts is the answer, but there are three settings within the FT70. There's high power, there's mid-range power, and there's low power. On low power, you're producing a half a watt of power. On mid-range power, 2 watts of power. And then if you're using high power, you could use all the way up to 5 watts. Let's test and see if that is the case. And also, let's take a look at the antenna and see what the SWR looks like on it. While I'm talking about power and I'm talking about antennas, I think it's safe to bring up the fact that the FT70 has a SMA female port on it, as opposed to the UV5R or the FT65, which both have SMA male ports or adapters on it. So that means, quite simply, you can't use your antennas from your Baofeng or your FT65, I guess unless you had something like a, a connector or an adapter for it. To conduct the power test, I'm using a diamond. SWR meter. And I've known this SWR meter to generally show an accurate representation of how much power is being used with this radio or with other radios. Uh, I know there are other ways to do the test, but unfortunately, this is what I have, so I just want to show you things. 
Now, I will say before we jump into these tests that the battery on the FT70 is slightly depleted, so you're probably going to see levels just drop a little bit. On VHF, here I am on the high power setting. And you'll see I go just over 4 watts. We'll call it 4.5 watts for fairness. If I go ahead and I move the power level down to the mid-range, you will see that I was just under 2 watts of power. And I think, again, that's fine too, especially with the battery being low. And then finally, there's your half a watt of power on low. So the power representation of this radio is fine. And I also should mention that when I ran this radio into the SWR meter, I ran it out using a dummy load. I was only able to test the VHF range on an antenna analyzer because my antenna analyzer only goes up to 230 megahertz. Hopefully I'll have that fixed in the future. But as you can see, I'm at a 1.12 to 1 SWR at the, I don't want to call it the middle of the band, but toward the middle of the band. So this antenna looks pretty good. I did figure people would enjoy seeing the radio on a spectrum analyzer just to kind of get an idea what kind of signal it's putting out. And uh, on VHF, for example, you'll see a nice spike here, which is where I'm transmitting, but you don't really see anything else going on on the spectrum. And this is from 0 to, I think, 1.5 gigahertz. So that's looking pretty good. Let's check out the UHF side. And so on the UHF side of things, when I transmit, what you're going to see here is a nice clean signal again. And I did see a little spike right here, but a nice clean signal with really no no horrible spurs emissions and uh, the harmonic isn't too high either so this yezu is definitely passing the test as far as spurs emissions or harmonics go the yezu ft70d does have up to 999 memory channels which is more than enough something i would never be capable of using myself but it is nice to have that ability if needed Along the same lines as the 999 memory channels is how to program this radio. And one thing I really appreciate that Yesu did was they went ahead and they provided us a data cable. And that data cable is capable of programming the Yesu FT70. However, if you're looking to program the radio with a memory card, the Yesu FT70D does not have a memory card slot built into it. And when I turn on the power on the radio, um, I do get your typical orange Yezu screen with the lit keypad, and there are a lot of settings in there, but I did want to point out how nice and big the display screen is and how easy it is to see even without my glasses. Like any radio menu function is pretty easy to navigate once you understand and get the hang of it. To hold down the F button, brings you into a menu, and then you could scroll using this top, what you would think was a volume knob, to go between the different settings in the menu. If you want to get out of the menu, just hold down the F button, and you're back to your main screen. This, this knob here does adjust the frequencies, but also if you hold down the middle button on the left side of the radio, the volume button, you could then adjust the volume. And, you know, it's okay. It's kind of weird to get used to because you're so used to this just being a volume button if you're coming from a lower end radio. Uh, but it, you get used to it. And if you want to lock the radio because you like the frequency and you don't want to accidentally bump that, all you got to do is hold down this button for about a quarter of a second and then unpress. So that's it. That's as easy as it goes. And once it's locked, it's not going anywhere. This radio does have the capability of wires X functionality, which is nice because if you want to talk to somebody over the internet, you have that capability to do so. The problem is, is for example, on the FT3D, there is a nice wires X button on the radio. This radio doesn't have it. So you have to kind of hit F button and then hold down the AMS button and then the wires X function blinks and I'm connecting to my MM DVM right now and as you'll see it says connect and then I could see basically a list of the rooms and I can go further into that which I'll do in another video but I just wanted you to be aware that the functionality of the wires X is there but it's a little bit tricky to find as opposed to the ease of the FT3. A lot of people complain about the battery on the Yezu FT70 and I guess it's hit or miss. And I say that because, well, it is an 18 milliamp hour battery, and it says it's at 7.4 volts. When I tested this at full charge, it did show 8.1 volts, so there might be a little bit of concern there. But people are more concerned about the battery life. I've seen some reviews say that there's only an hour battery if you're using the radio, and, and I would disagree with that. And so what I do to keep my battery life the best it can be is when, I, when it's fully charged or whenever it could be, I turn on two things automatic power off mode so i have my power automatically turn off if i haven't used the radio for an hour and then i keep mine on low power because i don't need to transmit at the highest power possible now you might need to and so that might not be feasible but with those results and me just using the radio throughout the day but 
not constantly transmitting, mainly listening, I'm seeing somewhere around six to seven hours of battery time. Now, the way to charge this radio actually is kind of a little bit different than, say, your FT65 or your FT4. And there's two ways to charge it. There's a quick charger way, which is an additional accessory and costs a little bit of money. But then you would put it in your cradle and it would quick charge this radio so your, your radio doesn't take all day to charge. Or there's the method that they provided, which is using the DC plug on the side. Now, I thought that that kind of sucked at first. And let me explain what I'm talking about. I said, well, you know, with the FT65, with the FT4, you guys always gave us a cradle. Why can't you just give us a cradle? And then I realized that there is actually a good function for having the radio plugged in directly to the side as opposed to the battery. If I wanted to unplug this battery, take it out, and just plug into here, I could bypass the battery. And that means I could have this radio on all the time if I needed it to be. Or, you know, like let's say, for example, I was out in the field and I had a biennial battery plugged into the DC adapter. Uh, well, then I could just plug it right into here and I could listen on the biennial battery all day without worrying about killing my battery, thus saving my battery for when I might need it. And really, I would probably recommend a secondary battery anyway, because the charge time on this thing without the rapid charger is something like seven to seven and a half hours. So here I am, I use a battery up. It, that was seven hours or whatever, and now I have to wait seven more hours to use this radio in the field. That's just not practical, and I'm thinking of this radio as a field radio. Uh, it's durable enough to be a field radio, uh, just that battery's kind of poor, so I would probably add a secondary battery to your, your go bag. That's another thing to mention, though. Without that rapid charger that's kind of bulky, this thing will fit in a go bag a little bit better than a radio that requires a rapid charger if you're going to need to carry that in. Another complaint that people might have about this radio is the fact that it's not a dual VFO radio. Hence, they might have problems with things like satellite operations or whatever it might be. Uh, I do believe that there's a way to still conduct satellite operations with this radio. It's just not as easy or as convenient. However, I will probably hit on that a little bit more in a further episode or a future episode. I will say the 700 milliwatt speaker on this radio, it still sounds fine, you know, as opposed to the Yezu FT65, which has a one watt speaker. Uh, to be honest with you, I hear just about the same thing. I think they both sound nice. They both sound crisp, especially when you compare it to a lower end Baofeng radio. They sound way better. And the final thing I actually want to make a clarification about was I said that there was 999 memory channels because that's what the manual tells me. And I might have just read something wrong because I have a tendency to do that. But then I referenced this online and it shows me that there's 1,105 memory channels that are possible. So something to keep in mind there, it's somewhere between 999 to 1,105 memory channels. And that might have been corrected by a firmware upgrade. I just don't know quite yet. But when I do the full in-depth detailed tutorial on this radio, I will get you the right answer. And regardless, I think this is still a great radio. There are quirks according to some people, about the battery life, and I'm not experiencing the worst battery thing in the world, but the charge time is kind of awkward. I do really like the ability to plug it into the radio now directly, which at first I didn't necessarily care for. I do think that if you're trying to get into C4FM or some kind of digital mode, and you want airband, this radio might be a good radio for you. There are a lot of people who will say, hey, go to DMR. There's plenty of DMR radios under $100, and, and I agree with that. I there's no way to argue that, but some people want to get into those wire X rooms or they want to have C4 FM, or maybe they just want the comfort of knowing they have a three year warranty through Yesu as opposed to some Chinese radio, which they say they have a warranty, but how are you going to actually contact their company? No, you got to go through a third party and there could be problems. So I do like the ability and the, the, the niceness that they have a three year warranty as well. You know, one of the things I'm going to leave you with, and it's a final thought. I will choose this radio over the FT3D, but why? Because if this is my field radio, that FT3D has a couple of quirks that I just don't feel uh, are durable enough for field use. And I feel that this radio is built with enough durability to be used in the field and not have to worry about water getting behind that huge LCD screen. This one is going to stay with me. I'm not going to give this one away at 500 subs because I do like this radio so much. I feel like this radio is going to be perfect for somebody who is a beginner and has an entry-level radio and wants to upgrade to the next step to be able to communicate with people on a digital level as well, but also maybe just to have a little bit more quality in their bag. 
Also, you don't even have to be a beginner and you don't have to have a beginner radio. I think this is great for people who are going to go out in the field and put it in your bag and it seems durable and it's still small and lightweight enough not to take up a lot of room. So guys, with it, I am going to make more videos on the FT-70, so be on the lookout for those. Consider hitting the subscribe buttons so you know that I'm making new videos about the FT-70. And if you did like this video, please hit the like or leave a comment to let me know that uh, you did enjoy it. Until next time, I am W9FFF Ham Radio Dude. I wish you 73.